Hi, this is Miss Darlene from Cheeky Math. In this lesson, we are going to learn about mixed numbers and improper fractions. We've learned in the past that improper fractions and mixed numbers are used to name fractions greater than one whole. Let's take a closer look at this pictorial representation. In this picture, there are two wholes and one half. How can we express this as a mixed number? 2 plus 1 half is the same as 2 and a half. This is an example of a mixed number. Take note that in a mixed number, there's a whole number and a fractional part. Remember that the fractional part has to be a proper fraction, which means that the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Otherwise, you would need to do renaming. Let's examine these mixed numbers and see if they need to be simplified. Let's take a look at the first example. 1 and 5 twelfths. 5 and 12 don't have a common factor except 1, which means that this mixed number is already in its simplest form since the numerator and the denominator cannot be broken down anymore into smaller parts. Let's go to the second example. 3 and 3 over 12. 3 and 12 have a common factor of 3, so we can divide the numerator and the denominator by that same number. 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. 12 divided by 3 is is 4. Don't forget that we have a whole number here. So 3 and 3 twelfths is the same as 3 and 1 fourth. Let's move on to the next example. 5 and 4 over 20. 4 and 20 have a common factor of 4, so we'll divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. 4 divided by 4 will give us 1. 20 divided by 4 is 5. And we still have a whole number there. So 5 and 4 over 20 is equal, equivalent to 5 and 1 fifth. Let's go to the next example. 1 and 27 over 3. Remember that 27 over 3 is the same as 27 divided by 3, and you know that you will get a whole number when you divide this. So 27 divided by 3 will give us 9. If we add it to the whole number here, we'll have a final answer of 10. So 1 and 27 over 3 will give us 10. And the last example, 4 and 18 over 6. Again, 18 divided by 6 is an, a whole number, which is equivalent to 3. So 3 plus the whole number here, 4, it will give us 7. So 4 and 18 over 6 is equal to 7. Now that we have learned how to simplify mixed numbers, let's try expressing mixed number into another form. A while ago, we have learned that this picture represents 2 and 1 half. There's another way to name this mixed number. We are going to use an improper fraction. Improper fraction can also be used to name fractions that are greater than one whole. So do take note that improper fractions don't have whole numbers and the numerator is equal to or greater than the denominator. So how can we express 2 and 1 half in improper fraction? It's like asking yourself, how many parts there are in total? And we are giving that information in the form of a fraction. The denominator tells us how many parts are in each whole. So, a denominator of 2 means a whole has two parts, like this. 
So we got one half here and another one half there. So the same as this one and here. And the last one, we got one half. So how many halves do we have in one hole? We got two. What about for two holes? We got four. And here, we got one. So adding all this together, we have five halves. So the fractional part tells we have 1 over 2. So now we can see all parts in the diagram. How many parts have we got? We have 5 halves or 5 over 2. 5 over 2 is the same as 2 and 1 half. Let's take a look at another example. What is the mixed number that is represented in this picture? So we have one hole, two holes, and three holes. So the whole number is a three, and then the fractional part is a quarter, or one-fourth. Now, how about expressing this mixed number into an improper fraction? So how many quarters do we have in one whole? So we got four quarters, another four quarters here, and then another four quarters here, and lastly, we have one quarter here. So adding all them together, we have 4, 8, 12, 13 quarters, or 13 over 4. So 3 and 1 fourth is the same as 13 over 4. Now we can actually change a mixed number into improper fractions without using diagrams. How do we do this quickly? We simply multiply the denominator by the whole number. So we got 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 will give us 5. So 5 over 2 will use the same denominator. So doing the same process again, first multiply the denominator by the whole number and then we add the answer to the numerator. So doing this, we got 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is equal to 13 over 4. We just copied the same denominator. Do you remember that we got the same answer as before? 2 and a half is equal to 5 halves. 3 and 1 fourth is equal to 13 over 4. And we have the same answer here. Let's practice some more. 5 and 3 sevenths. Change this into an improper fraction. 7 times 5 is 35. 35 plus 3 will give us 38 over 7. Moving on, we have seven, 9 times 8 is 72. 72 plus 4 is 76 over 9. And the last one. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 4 will give us 14 over 5. How easy is that? Next. This time... We can change improper fraction to mixed number and vice versa. How do we do that? 9 over 2 is the same as 9 divided by 2. So it's like asking yourself, how many 2's are there in 9? So using the long division process, we know that we will have a quotient of 4. So 4 times 2 will give us 8. And then there's a remainder of 1. So, how many 2's are there in 9? So, there are 4 holes and 1 left over over 2. Because the de de um, divisor or the denominator is 2. So, 9 halves is the same as 4 and 1 half. Let's do it one more time. 14 over 5. Change to mixed number. How many fives are there in 14? So it's just like dividing 14 
by 5. So how many 5s go to 14? We have 2 5s and we got 10 there and the remainder is 4. So we have a whole number 2, a leftover 4 over 5. So 14 over 5 is the same as 2 and 4 fifths. Let's move on. 28 over 3 is the same as 28 divided by 3. How many 3's are there in 28? We got 9. 9 times 3 is 27 and we have a leftover 1. So 28 over 3 is the same as 9 holes and a remainder 1 over 3. And the last one. 46 over 8. How many 8's are there in 46? We have 5. 5 times 8 is 40. And we got a remainder of 6. So we have 5 holes, a leftover of 6 over 8. Now take a look at our answer here. 6 eighths is not in its, in its simplest form. So we still have to look for, the, for their common factor, which is 2. So 6 divided by 2 will give us 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And don't forget the whole number. So 5 and 6 eighths is equal to 5 and 3 fourths. This concludes our lesson about mixed numbers and improper fractions.